In this video, you and I are going on a ride. Ready for some mental gymnastics? Great, because we are going to do a balancing act of different variants so that you can check the conditions you grow your orchids in and see if something needs to be tweaked based on the variables of what I call my orchid equation. Disclaimer, math is not my forte, but orchids are, and well, never mind. Thinking caps on and let's see if I can transfer what I have in my head onto something that you will find super useful when assessing your growing conditions and how to interpret what needs to happen when. Back to my favorite topic, math. <laughs> not this could be an epic analogy fail, but oddly enough, it works for me, so give me a chance to explain myself. Muchas gracias. An algebraic equation often consists of the following parts. You need the variables, the operators, the exponents, coefficients, and constants with an equal symbol ending with a result or value. When it comes to growing orchids, I will try and break down the orchid equation that I used to try and follow when I had the ability to supplement with artificial light and heat my indoor grow space when the seasonal conditions changed to less than ideal. Our orchid equation is not as complicated as that, but I have to add a disclaimer here. I'm giving you pointers as to what the result is based on the different variables, aka the needs the orchids have, without being able to actually act on them for myself, for my orchids. Maybe one day that will change, but for now, if you recognize discrepancies with what you know about what is going wrong with my collection, and here I am providing information as to how it's done, how to calculate the optimal orchid equation for you based on your growing conditions, please consider this a video of how to break down and not how I break down. Oh, oops. <laughs> that last part actually can be interpreted in different ways, but let's just stick with the orchids and the orchid equation. <laughs> how I break down. Now, you don't want to know. Anyway, all the following equations are not set in stone because welcome to the orchid hobby. The equation will switch and change. Your space may need to be recalibrated if you are growing where you are dependent on the four seasons as per mother nature, or even within your growth space, depending on the orchids you grow. So take it as a guideline and see how easy it will be for you to tweak your conditions in the future on the following breakdown. And with that being said, thank you so much for clicking on this video. Your time is appreciated. Now, let's do some math, but related to orchid care. So in my opinion, our variables are light, water, temperature, humidity fluctuations, and airflow. Our operators are the four seasons or rainy and non-rainy seasons, basically our environment. Exponents are not really a factor in our orchid equations. However, they may need to be added to the variables depending if any single one of those or multiple reach out of the norm influences. But our coefficients are when we combine our variables, light, water, temperature, and humidity fluctuations. And last but not least, our constants, or let's stretch the term a little to our values. Those are the orchids themselves. All the math gurus out there, don't laugh. <laughs> I'm using my imagination here, so go with the flow. Welcome to my brain and hear me out. <laughs> but feel free to add your interpretation into the comments. Anyway, the actual orchid equation is super basic. It is very often my go-to, especially when I have to break down what went wrong with an orchid. I picture this equation in my head more than I like to have to admit and check each variable to assess which one shifted and where I did not make the adjustments accordingly based on the shift of one. So this equation is what we want to end up with. It's the balance of everything working out perfectly to get our orchids to thrive. This also is what we want should we have to tweak a variable in order to achieve the best results post tweaking so that our orchids continue to grow and bloom. The balance of light plus water plus temperature plus humidity plus airflow equals thriving orchids. Simples. And because it's that simple, it kind of makes sense. Anyway, I call them variables for a reason. So if one changes, then somewhere something else has to change as well. Maybe more of one, less of the other, a combination of two adjustments, etc. So let's tweak this perfect equation by just increasing the light levels, be that longer daylight hours or stronger light. Orchids will respond to higher light or longer light exposure by either growing or resting, depending on which one you're dealing with. Keep that in mind. So if you're dealing with an orchid in active growth, 
Higher light will require more water, sometimes temperature increases, so should humidity, which in turn requires an increase in airflow. So you see how the changes of one variable affects the whole orchid equation. Now, if you are in a very dry climate or are limited with how much humidity you can provide for your orchids, then subsequently you will want to reduce the airflow as that speeds up evaporation and dries media or mounts out even faster, or you may need to stay on top of the watering to buffer against the dry air. We'll get to the example of that specific scenario. So before we do that, let's look at what happens with summer resting. What does our equation do? What happens to this equation when dealing with resting orchids during the summer? You have higher light. You reduce water with increased temperatures, needing an increase in humidity to maintain some form of moisture retention. And you need to up the airflow to help cool the orchid down summer resting, then there's winter resting. And in this instance, the orchid equation changes for resting orchids during the winter. Highlight levels are still a factor, even if the day length may be shorter because many winter resting orchids need high light, less water, lower temperature, higher humidity, and increased airflow. Oh, and side note, when I say water, you know, the asterisk, that includes a fertilizing and supplementing regime. They kind of go hand in hand, just to keep things a little more simple. So when it comes to most of the orchids that we grow in our private collections, the orchid equation should always balance itself out to provide what is needed based on what the orchid is doing and what are our variables up to. The dangers of tweaking one variable without addressing the others can result in the following. If the light levels are increased, you risk burning your orchids. If you do not water often enough, you risk dehydrating your orchids to the point of no return. If your humidity levels aren't high enough, you risk your orchids getting stressed because of transpiration through the leaves, which could cause your orchids to stall. If your airflow is not adequate to cool the orchid down, you risk all the worst case scenarios of high light and low humidity. And a little brain exercise for yourself, a little bit of homework. <laughs> Imagine reversing all of what I just mentioned and think of the repercussions based on any change in the variable and how it affects the overall growing potential of your orchids. Let's look at a few more examples. You see, if your conditions are dry as part of where your orchids grow, your equation has to reduce light levels, increase water, attempt to reduce the temperatures to allow some form of increase of humidity from the watering to be available for as long as possible, and definitely reduce airflow. Remember at any given time, if you haven't thought of this, take a screenshot of other orchid equations for some of the common conditions we grow our orchids in. Of course, all the cards are inserted here for you to peruse and see which which one could be helpful for your circumstances. Now let's go to warm humid conditions as an example and see how that affects our orchid equation. Light can be as high as necessary if water is readily available while temperatures are high and the humidity is above 70% with good airflow. And the risk of not providing adequate airflow in these conditions is leaf spotting and root rot or structures rotting. But you see how this equation is in actual fact the ideal. If we could all achieve this balance, our orchids would thrive and we would consider that growing orchids it's easy because it requires the least amount of effort. And if you're still here, goody, thank you so much. Let's look at another equation. For example, cold humid conditions. In this instance, light can be as high as necessary, water should be reduced while temperatures are low, and humidity is above 70% with less airflow. The risk of not reducing the airflow in these conditions would result in the orchids cooling down below what their temperature tolerance is. This equation can also be considered as the most risky of conditions that we have to navigate through because high humidity in combination with low temperatures where we have to watch out that our airflow is reduced to avoid cooling orchids down further, yeah, that is a breeding ground for fungi and bacteria. On the flip side, warm dry temperatures, the light needs to be monitored with increased water. During high temperatures and humidity no higher than 40%, the airflow needs to be reduced. <laughs> Are you having fun? <laughs> I hope so. One more example. <laughs> Cold dry temperatures. The light needs to be increased while reducing water during challenging low temperatures that are not ideal for some orchids. But you know, c'est la vie, we do the best we can with what we are able to work with. And cold dry temperatures, humidity is no higher than 40% and in that instance the airflow needs to be reduced just to not cool the orchids down further. 
Now, I still have something to add to the base equation, the ideal equation, but please, if you would be so kind, I would appreciate a thumbs up to help the video get into the algorithm. Also, if you have not subscribed to my channel, I kindly ask you to do so. And if you would like to support the orchids with a super thanks, know that I truly appreciate that as well. Muchas gracias. And I know that all this sounds very general, but I hope that you take away the importance of the domino effect, what the change of one variable in your condition can have for the overall environment and health of your orchids. There's also a little time factor which I would like to briefly address before I love and leave you. When it comes to sudden increase in light one day, even a single hour, it can cause serious damage. And when it comes to temperatures, be it a sudden increase or drop respectively, that can also cause damage even after a single day. And many times we are not able to respond and adapt the other variables to avoid damage because we're not able to be with our orchids 24-7 to quickly tweak the other variables in order to compensate for the sudden flip in one of the variables. However, any fluctuation of humidity and airflow, there is a margin of grace, meaning several days of increase to decrease of the norm is not going to do any harm. But humidity does have one little caveat. If you're growing your orchids in super dry conditions 90% of the time and your setup is geared towards counteracting the low humidity you have in your climate, then know that an increase of humidity over an extended period of time is risky for your orchids in a high water retentive setup. Add to that, you don't have a big increase in airflow, monopodials and new growths are at risk of rotting be it stem rot or the new growth just rotting out. Even when you supplement with CalMag or calcium nitrate, the conditions, the environment, when it comes to high humidity without increased airflow, ooh, that is always an issue. And as mentioned, more often than not, when the temperatures are low. And that was a tangent I was hoping to avoid because I wanted to keep the equations as simple as possible for you to dissect and apply to your conditions. But I had to add that because if you take this equation on board, then know that we cannot always be that vigilant and things happen in the orchid hobby no matter how hard we try to treat our plants right. Still, I hope that it helped to show you just how easy it is to forget that the change in one variable without adjusting others can cause issues out of the blue, so to speak. But you see how many different combinations there are when it comes to our orchid equation and how our awareness needs to be on point when a single one changes. And it is a great way of analyzing the cause or causes of what went wrong or why some of your orchids are showing signs of amazing unprecedented growth all of a sudden. I hope I could make sense of how I work with my orchid equation. Always feel free to bring any specifics in your circumstances to my attention if you would like me to clear a few things up in more detail. And please excuse any errors in my math analogies. Thank you very much. <laughs> Also, thank you so much that you watched this video to the end. I appreciate the support. I wish you a fabulous day on the condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.